Hello again and welcome to this video lecture where we'll see how to use the Kalman filter to estimate the position of a vehicle using noisy GPS measurements. So consider a train and at time zero the position of the train is x0 and it follows the normal distribution with a mean of zero and the variance of 100. For the sake of simplicity we consider the example of a train because it moves on a line so the position will be one-dimensional. The velocity of the train is approximately 10 meters per second, in the sense that it follows the normal distribution with a mean of 10 meters per second and the variance of 8 squared meters per squared second. The position of the vehicle, of the train, can be measured, for example using a GPS, every 0.05 seconds, and the measurements come with an additive noise. This is normally distributed and has a zero mean and the variance of 15 squared meters. The dynamics of the position of the vehicle is given by this pair of simple equations. It is important to note that the velocity, ut, is not a zero mean random variable, so we cannot apply the equations of the Kalman filter directly. However, we can do this little trick. We can write the velocity as u bar plus an error term where u bar is equal to 10 meters per second and wt, the error, follows the normal distribution with a mean 0 and variance 8 meters squared per second squared. Since u bar is a constant, it satisfies the dynamics u bar at t plus 1 is equal to u bar at time t. By combining the dynamics of u-bar with the dynamics of the position x, we end up with this linear system. The state of the system is now x boldface, which comprises of x and u-bar, and the initial state, x boldface at time 0, follows the normal distribution with this mean and this variance. Since we only measure the position and not the velocity, this is the output equation in terms of x bold phase. This leads to the linear dynamical system shown here. It's time to apply the Kalman filter on the system. At time zero, x0 follows the normal distribution with a mean of 0 and a variance equal to 100. The pink bar that you see corresponds to the interval mu plus minus 3 times sigma. So with probability about 99.7%, the initial position is somewhere inside this pink interval. Here we have the true initial position of the train, which is unknown x hat not minus 1 denotes the expected value of x not. At time 0, we obtain the measurement y0 equals 10.2. With this measurement, we determine the conditional distribution of x not given y not, and we estimate x hat not not, which is the conditional expectation of x not given this measurement of y not. This is shown here with a yellow bar. Given this measurement of y0, namely 10.2, there is a 99.7% probability that the state is actually contained in this yellow interval. So we see how we updated our prior belief that the state is inside the, the pink bar. Once we obtain the measurement, we can now say that the state is inside the much shorter, narrower, yellow interval. The estimate x hat not not is determined from y not using what we mentioned previously we refer to as the measurement update. We then employ the time update to predict x1, that is x hat one not and sigma one not, and this is illustrated here with this second pink bar. Again we measure y1 and determine the conditional distribution of x1. By repeating this procedure of applying the measurement and time updates, we can estimate the system state from output measurements. Mm -hmm. 
this is what the estimates look like if we have a better sensor. That is, we have a lower measurement variance. The value of the measurement variance before was 15 and now it is 0 0.5. And this is what happens if we have a good sensor but a highly uncertain system. We will have a large prediction variance but a small error variance after the measurement update. And lastly, this is what happens if we have a bad sensor and a highly uncertain system. So both R and Q are large. The Kalman filter can be applied in cases where the sensor provides measurements intermittently. This is the case when we have a remote sensor, as in the case of a GPS system. So the connection can be lost. The GPS provides measurements from time, let's say, 0 up to time T1. And then the connection breaks for some time and it recovers at some future time T2. So long as we can obtain measurements from the sensor, we can interleave measurement and time update steps. In particular, we use Y0 to determine X hat not not and sigma not not. We determine then x hat 1 not and sigma 1 not. We use y1 to determine x hat 1 1 and sigma 1 1 with the measurement update and then we predict with the time update we predict x hat 2 1 and sigma 2 1. And then suppose that the connection gets interrupted. Then we cannot apply the measurement update anymore but we can keep predicting the future states so we predict x hat 3, 2, x hat 4, 2, and so on, and the corresponding variance-covariance matrices. Note that, as expected, the variance keeps growing. Suppose that at time t equals 8, we reconnect to the satellite and we can obtain a measurement y8. We can then apply the measurement update and keep applying the measurement and time update steps of the Kalman filter. So, so long as we have measurements, we can apply both the measurement update and the time update. If the connection breaks, we should only apply, we can only apply the time update. Here we see the true state, the estimates produced by the measurement update, and the estimates of the time update. Once again, thank you very much for watching and stay tuned for the upcoming videos. Next, we will show that the Kalman filter is the best linear unbiased estimator, for short, blue. So until next time, take care and goodbye. <laughs>